Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. But, so, I've seen all kinds of different ways of doing things. I've had farmers say that, you know, unloading all of the bales out of the baler at one end of a field is really moronic and stupid because it's going to damage the baler because you're running backwards and forwards you shouldn't be doing that it's going to yeah and it's going to completely ruin it and it'll never work again and then their next door neighbor does exactly that um because they don't have the gear for moving the bales any other way and it's actually the most convenient way of doing it um and or they do have the gear for moving the bales, it's just easier doing it that way, yada yada yada. There's always different ways of doing things, um, but I must admit the running the baler to the end of the field and emptying it out is probably one of the least common methods I've seen of doing um, any kind of silage or hay or straw or anything like that. Usually the bale is dropped where it's ready. As soon as the bale, as soon as the bale is complete like this, that's where the bale is put. The only thing, the only concession you make is like you, you back it round a corner slightly like that, so that the bale is mostly hanging across the field and doesn't roll off down to the bottom of a, a, a mountain or anything like that. Right, we've got that field there. The last thing I want is a bale of grass rolling into the middle of that wheat field. That would be somewhat inconvenient for us at the moment. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to drive along here and just pick up a few of these bits like that. And then I will swing around it and I will go and get that bit right on the end there. Like that. I'm having to turn quite sharp on this, which is not really the best thing to do for the baler, but sometimes you don't have a lot of choice in the matter. Okay, we can take that one on through there, and then we'll go back over and do the third one along. Well, second, well it'll be the second one from us now. And I'm going to do it like that. Because that's going to give us the least number of sharp turns, if I take that one. You there, excellent. Also being very cautious about how I tip these bales. Oh, I missed a little bit of grass there. Um, very cautious about how I tip these bales out because if we get them wrong, we are going to end up with a bale. I mean, it's going to be bad enough if we end up with a bale stuck in the middle of the wheat field, but chances are the bale isn't going to stop there in the middle of the wheat field. It's just going to carry bouncing on down the hill and finish up in the middle of a greenhouse, and that's going to be slightly more expensive. That's definitely going to be something that would be a little bit more expensive to go and fix. I mean, yeah, technically, in this game, it's not going to make any difference. It'll be absolutely fine. There'll be no issues there whatsoever. Go down that way. And I'm just going to have a drink a second. That's much better. See, right over there, just above the cab. So you've got the pillars of that bridge all the way over there. See how steep those meadows are over that side. I know we've got a bit of a steep meadow down that side and um, I've deliberately not farmed it because it's so ridiculously steep that our tractor would just struggle too much. Like I wouldn't be able to bail up and down that hill, that would that would just be too difficult for us, so I don't think we'd be able to do it. Um, it would be interesting to try and do it, but I would, if I was going to do something like that it would either be a something I would try and work in, a, excuse me. Something I'd try and work in a time lapse series, or something I would try and work in um, just like single player doing it on my own. Um, I think for a series like this, it wouldn't work very well. It would just take too long to actually accomplish something in that field. Let's back you up a little bit. This one can stay pretty much where he is. Do that there. I don't know if that tractor's gonna forget where he's going in a minute. Uh, he, he's got another couple of runs that he should be able to do going up through there without any problem. But I don't know how much more he's going to be able to do. Because, like, the mowers, it, they didn't like it, but the mowers were taking quite a wide sweep. And we know what the hired help is like. It's very 
pernickety. It doesn't like to do what it's supposed to do. It doesn't like to do what it's told. There's a little tiny bit of grass I've got behind there. I'm just going to scoop that up there. And then I'm going to back up here. How steep is this hill on the first Not very steep. I deliberately picked this bit of the meadow up here because it's not steep. We've got all these round circular objects we're dumping everywhere. We need to, like, so I, that's why I picked it like this. I mean, there are some bits where we could lose bail, but um, it's, it's not too bad. So I shouldn't really be getting any areas that the tractor is going to struggle on. So if I do get bits where the tractor is struggling, I'm at a loss as to why he should be struggling. Let's lift that one up. We're racing along here. And this is where the weight of the rake was, like, dragging it downhill. Okay, we're not going to be able to weave in and out and get everything there. So if I get the bits in between the rows and then we'll do the the rows themselves. Like, the, the wiggle bits, we'll, we'll do those in a minute. And how many have we got? Oh, there's only three. All right, so I'll drive down this one and then we'll skip one and we'll go up the next one and goes to there and let's not go too far let's bring that to about there I think let that one out right what I'm going to do that you will see a skip in recording so we may have new mods we may have, we may have something shiny and nice to look at when I come back is I'm just going to do these couple of runs right here and then I'm going to come back all refreshed. There's a little steep bit. Got a little steep bit right here. I'm going to come back all refreshed for another round of recording to go and start doing the long runs on the field for my next time. Which I think is going to work out quite nicely because then we can go and clear the field. We're going to use that trailer. We'll use the auto load trailer and we'll move all of the bales off of the field up here. I'm just not sure where I want to put them. I'll need to decide that one. Fortunately, that's not something I can go and ask any of you because I'll do the recording before any of you see the, this video here. So, really going to make any difference. Um, thinking that I will probably take them off of this field and move them down near the greenhouses. That might be the best place to put them. But I'm also wondering about taking them over and putting them sort of at that end of the field so that they're kind of... Just up there, like that. Uh, over against the road over there, because that, that, that's not a bridge over there. And so there's nowhere for the bales to actually roll. We could stick them over there. They'd be out of the way. They're not going to cause any problems. That might be quite a safe place to go and leave the bales so that I don't lose anything. And that's kind of important to me. I don't want to be losing bales. That, that would be rather distressing. We've, we've only just gone and made them. We definitely don't want to be losing them just yet. But I do need to clear them off this field so that I can then get the tractor hooked up to the roller and get that started. So we've got quite a bit of rolling that we're going to want to do so that this field ends up with, like, the double coat of fertilizer that it's supposed to have. Just jump back into this one and get it started. I've just started that one back up again. So I've been recording again. And I just want to make sure that it does actually turn in the correct direction to head back across the field. Because sometimes it doesn't, and it's a bit of a jolly nuisance. I recently seen a... Um, a, another picture of someone who I am giving a shout out to, a young gentleman by the name of Samuel, Samuelson. He was, I've seen him feeding some lambs, actually, he was bottle feeding lambs, and, that, well, I wasn't, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure who looked happier in the picture, um, him or the lambs. They, they, they both seem fairly pleased with this arrangement of um, the, the whole bottle feeding thing going on. So, yes, um, a, a shout out to Samuel and his lambs. I don't know what they're called. Personally, the last time I kept a pet lamb was a very, very long time ago, and I named mine Mintzels. So, um, that tells you everything you need to know about me and my pet lamb. Um, I, I'll say no more on the subject. So, hello to Samuel if you're watching this video. 
Uh, I'm going to switch over to here. There is something I just want to show you really quickly in here. We go to probably bail loaders. Um, we've got this one, the auto load bail trailer that goes with the bales that come from the, the far APN baler. And this one doesn't actually take the standard size bales. Um, the, the the standard size bales that come from that baler right there. So it's 120 centimeters out of there. And although the bale loader, this trailer here does say it goes 49 up to 120 centimeters, I was never able to get it to work with those. But there is a new mod that has just been released. There's that one as well, actually. This one here has got um, auto load on it quite sure how i haven't tried that one out but anyway ignore that one um it wait where is it where's 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 the trailer it should be here it's not that one i feel like i've been betrayed i i, I feel this ultimate stab i've been i know where it is i know where it is is the stab of betrayal because you can use it as both you can use it as a flatbed trailer for loading bales and you can use it for i don't think it's that one no it's not it's not that one uh you can also use it for grain so it's got sides on it as well so you got you got the options it's that one the lizard 8001 right here between four and 335 bales so it does everything and you have it right there. That's the standard configuration right in there. Uh, we've got bail trailer mode and standard mode. That's it. So you've got bail trailer or standard. You can have up to uh, 4,000 liters held in that one. So there's no option to make it more than 4,000 liters. Um, but you do have the bail trailer. And if you get that, it will load apparently up to 335 bales, it says right there. Um that is small bales and from what i've seen from the description of the actual mod it should be small bales like everything that you can load in normal uh, for pallets and stuff like that i think because it does the the pallet loading um it might not do the pallet loading i'm not sure about that it might just be bales but it'll do all the different sizes of bales and i think it will do the bales from the far APN baler as well, but I don't know. So like I said, I haven't tested any of it, and I'm sort of quite interested in seeing what this one's like, because those are 49 centimeter bales. So it, it does say that it will go down to smaller bales, so it might take the ones out of that baler. Don't count on it, though. It is. It seems to be designed for auto-loading these bales right here. I'm really pleased. I, I, I'm really looking forward to trying that one out. I won't be trying it out on this particular series, but I will be trying it out. And I'm kind of thinking that maybe we'll start the next hardcore series with a round baler in the shed and maybe that trailer as well. I'll test it before then just to make sure that it does actually work. And if it does, that would be absolutely fantastic. So we will then have another baler, uh, uh, another trailer that we can use. Um, is the fact that we'll be able to auto load small bales. That's what I've wanted right from the start, is a method to quickly remove small bales from the field. Because it's all well and good having the standard bale collector. If we're on a hardcore series though, as we are, it's a little bit difficult to use that one. Because you've got to, is, is this one, right? Now, using it itself is not difficult. It is a bit time consuming, but it's very expensive. 64,000 euros in order to be able to get that one going when 64,000 is going to get you an awful lot. Like we, we've got the round bales and we've got the ability to pick these up. And so that there's all kinds of different things that we can do using the round bales. Um, I didn't actually mean to unhitch that one right in the middle of the field. I meant to open up the, the, the back of it, which is, yeah, I pressed the wrong button. Right. Don't do that. Don't don't accidentally unhitch your vehicle as you're driving along in the field. It can result in bad things happening. Uh, you, you, you don't really want to go down that road. It's, it's never a good thing. So we are going to continue on with our 
bailing and then we're going to get the wrapper going in this field and wrap up these bales as rapidly as we possibly can and then once that's done we need to stash them somewhere so that they can be left until winter when we will be wanting to sell them um not quite sure when exactly in the winter we'll sort of be thinking about selling them things like that uh i was hoping to complete the series in 75 episodes in under 75 episodes that was kind of what i was aiming for i realized i've only got 15 episodes left or you know slightly less than that now and this is making it increasingly less likely that i'm gonna be able to get my tailoring shop built and making us money before episode 75 we might be able to oops uh, we might be able to we might still be able to do this i'm um, i'm still holding out hope that we can do it we've got this we've got all of the silage going i mean maybe we sell the silage a bit early we've got the grain down there in the field that's ripening and we'll be able to harvest that we'll get some straw from that we don't need to use the straw for anything which means that we can sell all of it immediately straight off the field if we want to or we hold on to it i don't think there's a huge amount of difference in price when it comes to the straw so we might as well just sell it straight off the field should we can have a look at that while that one tips out let's have a look straw right there is currently around 40 yes it goes 33 to 49 so i mean there is a difference 37 there it's an extra 10 per thousand liters which is it's not a lot it's, it's it's really not a lot but i mean i suppose we can just wait until we're selling the silage bales and do it like that that might be the bet that might that might actually be the better way to do it wait till we're doing the silage bales and kind of, and then do it like that so that we're selling everything all at once probably our best bet we'll wait and see on that front we will wait and see now have a lot of another lot of bales ready uh, we've also got the um fenceless animal husbandry that we might be able to use to expand our sheep a little bit if we wanted to i don't really think we need to um i'm i'm sort of thinking that we probably don't need to worry too much about that um we can just kind of keep going with things just the way they are like with, with the number of sheep that we've got right now we don't need to worry too much about trying to go and get a whole load more of them it's enough that we're we're getting a steady supply of wool and if we can keep that moving down to the the thingy down the bottom down to the spinnery so that we can make some fabric we can keep working on that for oh yeah he is um we can keep using the fabric for well we're going to want to start using the fabric for making clothes we, we want to be able to do that two pallets of clothes what i said that's the target is i'm supposed to have two pallets of clothes and i'm supposed to have chickens well i'm gonna have chickens before i get to that bit so at least i've kind of like earned the bonus in the next series which is going to be free uh fences and landscaping which is a mod that i really really like um i'm now actually using it in both of my other series free landscaping and fences and it does make a difference and so it'd be nice to have that chucked in with the hardcore series as well just to kind of like uh, add add to it a little bit i think that's definitely going to help things out a bit um make life a little bit easier so we've got we've got the chicken bit so i have the bonus for the chickens but we may also end up having to have an expensive loan to start things off if i cannot finish this series by episode 75 which was the target that's gonna make life a bit more difficult because we like because we gotta wait for when we can sell things if we're starting with very little money anyway then we're kind of looking at a situation where we're not going to be making enough money to begin with to cover the amount 
that the loan is going to be taken from us. And that's going to get really tricky. Now, we can go with some greenhouses again. Greenhouses... I get the impression from a lot of people that some of you both love them and loathe them at the same time. Because greenhouses are a reliable source of income, they're probably the most reliable source of income that you can get for early game, which kind of pushes you towards having the greenhouses. And if you take the deliberate step to not have greenhouses, it does make things quite a bit more difficult to maintain any kind of regular income early on. Now, of course, option two is trees. And so long as you're not having to cut down too many deciduous trees, in particular the oak trees. I understand that the oak trees, which would be that one right there above the cab. That's an oak tree over there. I understand those are the worst culprits for the issues that the game has with uh, trees not working properly, with um, forestry work not working properly, the, the branches all being oversized or weird shapes and weird weights and everything. It, it seems that the oak trees are the worst culprits for it. There is another tree as well, I think, that does do it to a certain extent, but nothing like the oak trees. Um, most of the others are all right. You may get the odd little it issue with them, sort of just a lot odd little hitch going on with them, but generally speaking, they're pretty good. Um, my personal recommendation is the Lumberjack mod. Have that Lumberjack mod installed. You don't necessarily use it very much anyway, um, but if you've got deciduous trees you need to get rid of, use the Lumberjack mod, because you just have a chainsaw, you point it at the tree, and enable the special mode which you just use by you just press alt so it's basically enabling the super strength and then you get a red marker come up for your chainsaw use and that completely removes the tree stump and everything it's absolutely fantastic i strongly recommend you do that when you're trying to get rid of deciduous trees and then your forestry work, if you focus on only doing normal forestry work with the pine trees, those over there, the evergreens, um, you shouldn't have any issues. Those do seem to be absolutely fine. I've not encountered any issues yet with any of the pine trees, which is really, really good. That is absolutely fantastic because it means that you can do forestry work you can do stuff like that without any problems so long as you're doing the right trees so the tree harvesters the log logging cranes all of that it all seems to work just fine with those logs it's only the, the deciduous ones that uh, people seem to have trouble with and i've also heard it said that it's not that they always cause problems it can be that they'll cause problems if you cut too many down at once that could very well be an issue um so only cut down one tree and dispose of the the, the branches and everything sort of as quickly as possible instead of cutting it up into lots and lots of little bits cut a piece off get rid of it by chipping or selling or whatever and then cut another piece off. I know that that could be a little bit time consuming and tedious but I mean not many people take those types of trees to the sawmill. Most people take those types of trees uh, uh, will uh, cut those types of trees up into wood chips. I'm not saying that everybody does but generally from my experience most people like to wood chip those kinds of trees and then the other ones they take to the sawmill because you get more money for them if you, if you take it to the just take it to the sawmill whereas the the other ones are the deciduous trees you don't necessarily get more money just taking it to the sawmill because the branches don't cut up very well and the sawmill depends on longer logs that are straight which you don't get with those leafy branched trees so it's a win-win situation. However, what I'm going to do when we move on to the next map, and it will be Calm Lands. Calm Lands has had update and so on. Um, so that's, that's unless 
something significant happens that makes me want to go to something different than that. I'm not going to a full forestry map. There are maps out there um, that are complete forestry, like the Rizu Forest that I'm now doing with my play around series. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go down that road with the hardcore as well. I don't want to have two maps where I'm doing the same thing, even if I'm doing it in a different style. So Calm Lands has got lots more open space. I don't need to do forestry on that map. The forestry at the start is going to be something to gain us a little bit of extra money, just kind of like keep us going until we start earning from our farm. And that's going to... That's going to be the important bit. I'm also not going to make the mistake that I've made here and be too far away from the dealership. Like, it's great having, you know, being up on the mountain and everything, but the distances that we've got to travel in order to get to the dealership are a little bit of a nuisance. Although, that being said, maybe I'll be happy to drive that little extra distance to the dealership if I have a sail point on the Calmlands map that we can use as an, a, a universal sail point. Because there are actually now a few. I don't know if I've got any in here. Let's have a look. Go to construction. We want to go to uh, production selling points. So this is your normal selling points right here. You've got various different ones that we can go and build. Biomass heating plant that you can put in a few bits and pieces um, and so on. But those are the base game ones. You've got the government drain placed on your farm to get rid of unwanted liquids with a small fee. Water is free. Uh, so you've got to pay to get rid of some of those things. Um, is that all I got? Wholesale. All agricultural products can be sold here. It does cost 100000 but it also has everything can be sold. I don't know why it's not scrolling through on everything there. It usually does when you, you're looking up. Anyway, everything can be sold at the wholesale place. And that might be a good option for us. We can put that near our farm if we decide on calm lands that actually, yes, we will set up shop a little bit further away from the dealership. In which case, I will start off with a wholesale sell point and the cost of installing and building that fairly close to our farm will be included in the loan if we have to take out a loan. Otherwise, I'll just put it there before we start the series. And we'll kind of work from there. Uh, else did I want to talk about? We need to talk about something while I'm driving along here. It's not the fastest job, this, is it? That's why I didn't want to do this too much, because it gets a little bit tedious after a while. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.